Have you always wanted to tell cinematic stories with your drone shots? Well, I've got the biggest tip ever for you, and it has nothing to do with color grading or LUTs or, or frame rates or ND filters or anything like that. And in fact, if you are a drone nerd, this is going to hurt a little bit. The best way to tell cinematic stories with your drone shots is... Don't make it all about the drone shots. In the words of Casey Neistat, No one gives a shit about your stupid drone shots. Your drone shots, just like everything else you shoot, should serve the greater needs of the visual story you're trying to tell. I get people on YouTube contacting me and saying, Hey, check out my drone channel. And then I go and check it out, and it's like... 15 uninterrupted minutes of flying around the neighborhood. I mean, other than a couple of hardcore drone fans out there, nobody wants to see that. It's like forcing someone to look at a hundred photos from your last vacation. Your drone is a specialized camera tool, and with that specialization comes limitations. Kind of like a telephoto lens. It's great for a few different types of shots, but you wouldn't shoot an entire video using a 200 millimeter lens. When you watch a movie in a movie theater, notice how the DP and the director choose a variety of wide shots, medium shots, close-up shots to help tell the visual story. You want to do the same thing in your production. However, drone shots are fundamentally wide shots. And I don't mean wide-angle lens, although they usually have a wide-angle lens. What I mean is they are taking wide shots. They're getting the entire panorama, the entire vista, the entire environment, and they are far away from their subject. Now, yes, you can move a drone closer to its subject, further away from a subject, but you're really just getting different kinds of wide shots. And the problem with wide shots is that they build an emotional distance between the viewer and the subject. So you need other equipment to get those medium shots and close-up shots because you really need them in your production. All right. Well, that Thanks was so. good. Some go in your hair. <laughs> like, yeah, you got it out. That was an excerpt from a vlog episode of mine. And notice how I started with the medium and close-up shots first and then went to the wide drone shots later. And a lot of times you'll see in productions the opposite, where someone will start with a wide shot that's an, an establishing shot and then move in with the medium and close-up shots. So what can we do to build a little bit of an emotional connection with our viewer using our drone shots? Well, people love looking at people. Now, landscapes can be pretty, but as soon as you put a person in that landscape, your viewer's eyeballs go right to that person. Now, these wave shots, you know, they're kind of cool, but the thing that my viewers are going to remember from this sequence is the shot with the people in it. If you can put a person in your drone shot or even an animal or something moving like a car, you're going to make more of an emotional connection with your viewer and you're going to make your shot more interesting as well. Another tip for telling cinematic stories with your drone shots is to use visual elements in your drone shots that are the same as in your other shots and this helps tie them together. If you don't do this, your drone shots might feel pretty random. So you want to see some of the same things in your drone shots that that you see in your other shots. Now, it can be pretty obvious. For example, in this sequence I'm gonna show you about the Ventura Pier, the pier is in all the shots and that helps tie everything together. Stop before I go home. I or you can be more subtle. This drone shot sets the location with a big wide shot of Homer, Alaska. And then each shot after that gets tighter and tighter until we end up on a close up of me talking. And in all these shots, there's the same beach, there's the same pier, and it's subtle, but if you know where to look, you can spot them. And it helps tie everything together. Every time we've been down to this rocky beach before,
Don't believe me? Check out these two shots. Something doesn't feel quite right, and here's the problem. The drone shot is showing cars driving down the freeway, and it looks like it's in a rural area. There's green orchards on both sides of the freeway, and then we cut to the interior of the car, and it looks like we're in an urban environment, and so the two shots just don't work well together. If you've only just started flying drones, it feels pretty amazing every time you film something from the air. I totally get it. You want to share it with everyone. However, just like every other shot you take, you want your edits, your cuts to be on the short side. You don't want to bore anyone with them. I like to use the ooh-ah rule in my B-roll editing. And what that means is I want the viewer to enjoy the clip and go ooh-ah and then move on. Really, we're talking a couple of seconds max. Any B-roll clip that's longer than that is probably going to be boring. And yes, you can use more than one drone clip in your B-roll sequence. Just make sure that when you're filming with your drone, you're getting lots of different angles, you're getting a lot of different shot types, and then when you edit it all together, keep them short. Since a drone is such a specialized camera instrument, I almost always find myself traveling with other cameras, other gear, and having a small, light, compact drone really makes that more manageable. One of the drones I shoot with quite frequently is the DJI Mini 2. It's small, it's light, it's compact, and in some ways it's better than its bigger cousins. In fact, I made a whole video about that called Five and a Half Things I Love About the DJI Mini 2, which you can watch right there. Perhaps this is the drone that you'll end up using for your own cinematic stories. <laughs>